Well, we're back. Been a little while, but we're back in the car. We're back on the road. We're in overdrive, and we're just cruising down the lane, trying to get out of a cold, dark winter and head into a nice, warm spring. There's lots of great car events coming up. And Wayne, you have wasted no time hitting the road. You've already been down to Kissimmee for the Mecham auction. Tell me a little bit about what was rolling at, at Kissimmee, and then tell me who you ran into while you were there. So, Jay, I was at Kissimmee, uh, and of course, Mecham does a fabulous job at their auction down there. Forty. 800 cars sold wow um and in, in like a 12 day uh time period unbelievable um and and some sold for huge money they had a, a wonderful display of ferraris uh, actually in that display two cars that i had restored previously so i got to see a couple of my old restorations but uh, a lot of great cars and 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 really brought big numbers i mean it was amazing some of the stuff there were there was, uh, th- there's cars that, well, it was a Shelby GT350 that broke $500,000. Right. And of course, Ferraris and, and modern supercars and stuff like that. I brought um, um, two hot rods and a pickup truck down. Uh, we sold the pickup and, and one of the hot rods and the other one didn't sell. But while I was there, I got to uh, welcome a good friend of mine, Riley Schlick, who's, who's uh, Riley Rebuilds. And we got to sit in the Ferrari room nice quiet room so we could do an interview. So Matt was there with me and we recorded this interview. So let's just take a listen and maybe we can find out what Riley is all about. Yeah. Awesome. And this is the girl who kind of started her own little world of rebuilding carburetors. I can't wait to hear about this. This is exclusive. So Riley, we're here at Nikum Kissimmee 2024. What's your thoughts? It's incredible. It's a dream, always. But these cards are top of the line amazing. Have you ever been to an auction before? I have not. This is so my this first is your one. first opportunity. Yep. Have you bo- gone in and watched the auction procedures yet? Not. Oh, okay. No. Well, you got to go in and watch. Do. Yeah. It's really a lot of fun. I mean, I grew up with watching them on TV, so hopefully I'll be able to jump in there. At well, you guys time. will be able to go in after we do this yeah. little talk and, and go awesome. in and see everything that's happening but you got out in the staging lane so that's the beginning you know so we're over in the tent where my other cars are and then they come around to the staging lane and people get to look at them a little yeah. more and get the juices flowing and do and they, they normally like sent out and people already know what they want to buy when they come here well sometimes i mean you know um i certainly didn't know and here i am today owning a car that i never thought i'd buy but <laughs> it's one of those things um, yeah, it's, it's a marketing. So for instance, that Torino that you mm-hmm. saw earlier, I showed you, uh, my Talladega, um, we're going to promote that. That's, that's quite a special car. Right. So you promote it and, and make sure that everybody knows that, that it's going to be in, in, uh, Arizona for sale in March. It certainly helps, but you know, you try to place a car. So today and tomorrow, are the really hot days because they're on the weekend. Everybody's here. Right. Everybody's excited. Right. You know, the room is right there. Everybody's having a great time. Mm-hmm. And guys like me show up that have no <laughs> idea they're going to buy a car and then they do it. So it's 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 a fun experience. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and being part of this whole car community and, and everything that we do. And so, yeah, you got a great future. We're friends, but we're friends through automobiles. Yes. And so you're you're into uh, carburetor rebuilding mm-hmm. and tuning. Yes. So it's not just rebuilding, it's tuning. Oh. It's both. Yeah. So uh, I started when I was really young. You know this story. But yeah. I'll tell it to you again. Yeah, you can tell. Um, I started when I was 13 when I wanted my first car. And I'm from Florida. And in Florida, the working laws, you have to be 14 or older for minimum, which was like $8 at the time, which is not enough. Um, and I needed that job because my dad told me I had to buy my first car. Okay. And he was not paying for it. <laughs> That's good advice. Which is a very good advice Yeah. as an adult now saying that and yeah. looking back on it. Um, and we've always been flipping things in the garage. He's always had side hustles and that's just, you should always have a side hustle. Even with your own job or your primary job. It's just something that he's raised me mm-hmm. on. So he's always been flipping cars. And he's not even in the car industry. He's uh, in the doctors and all that. All the health. And... So I started doing carburetors. There, I walked down the garage and there was one on the shelf. 
And I asked what it was. It was like air fuel makes car go. Yeah, Thick sure. Terms. And I asked how much the margins would be for the profit. And it was a really decent amount for a 13 year old. And I did a competitive soccer. So we travel all over Florida looking for really old carburetors. He teach me how to negotiate all the prices down and really taught me how to like talk to adults and make connections in the industry and use those connections to benefit yourself. And a lot of business came from it. And I did that for a while until I got enough money to buy my first car, which was a 95 YJ. It was rat infested, really ugly, awful. Um, and him and I worked on it and that's when COVID hit. So we had two years of just nothing and we threw ourselves in that and we actually got it done by the time I was 14. Wow. Um, 14, 15. Yeah. Which we didn't think was going to happen. So I had a amazing car at 14, 15 just sitting there for a little bit. Um, and I kept making some money, but I had done my project. I had gotten what I wanted. I was just waiting to get my license and everything. And um, But you're making money rebuilding carburetors. Rebuilding so how, carburetors. How did that happen? So you you, you went to some shops yeah, so and asked if they Facebook needed a carburetor? Facebook Marketplace. Okay. We'd instantly go on there. We'd look up the location where it was. And if we'd see how dirty they were, how grimy, if I could actually rebuild them. Because there's some that we could turn away. Um, and we try and see the lowest price. So $50 was a really good margin for me. Anything above was less profit off of my mm -hmm. money. Um, but we would just run around on Facebook Marketplace. So you'd find a carburetor, you'd buy the kit, mm -hmm. you'd clean it, you'd yeah, rebuild we'd it. we'd break it down, soda blast it, ultrasonic tank it, and then rebuild it. Okay. And then you you put it out for sale mm -hmm. within the marketplace again. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly. how you, that's how you got going. Yeah, that's how we got going. Okay. And then um, I stopped for a bit. And then once I started driving, I needed gas money. So that's kind of, it kind of a little bit picked up, not too much. And then I crashed into my best friend's car. Yeah. And that was 10K in, expans in expenses. So I had to pay for that, obviously, my fault. Um, so that's how I was like, I need to ramp this really up, ramped really it ramped up. it up. Yeah. And at that point, we had put on Facebook, like a little Facebook group, um, hey, I'm Riley, explain the whole situation, what I did. If you have any parts for carburetors or old carburetors lying around, I would buy them off of you. Um, I need to expand just from Florida because we had bought Florida out of carburetors pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and that post went viral on Facebook that in three days hit about three million people. Wow. And I had, over the next two weeks, 300 carburetors for free. On my doorstep. Wow. People are just sending them to Just send them. Because everybody's like, oh, I have two or three on my shelf I never use. Put them in a box. What's your address? Send them. Wow. And that's how it started. And on eBay and uh, Facebook Marketplace, we mm -hmm. had a little rebuilding. So you send us your carburetor. We re rebuild it. We send it back. And Great. that went crazy, too. Yeah. So we just had a major fluctuation of people talking to us and wanting business and I had too much to handle and I had four girl best friends and that's when the girls came in. Um, so they were all 18. I had to teach them. Two of them were really into cars and the other two weren't as much, but they loved it. They all quit their part-time jobs and came and worked full-time for me. That's great. Yeah. So in the family garage, mm -hmm. you start your own business, you're yep. rebuilding carburetors mm -hmm. and it goes nuts. Yes. And you become famous. A little bit. A little bit. Not, yeah. That's yeah. okay. But... <laughs> And, uh, and, and so it's, it's amazing, you know, it's a, the power of the internet, of course, and, and Facebook and, yeah. and Instagram and all that stuff is, is kind of crazy. It is very crazy. Yeah. You wouldn't have gone out other wise than yeah. that, yeah. but. But it's really cool that you're able to do this and you're in the business, but you're a soccer player. I am. You got a scholarship and you're I going did. up to Con College, which is yes. in Connecticut, right down the street yeah. from my shop, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got to know each other. Yeah. Bogey, uh, our good yeah. friend Bogey called me and said, hey, this is this girl and she's <laughs> moving out to college and she's going to be right down the street. Mm -hmm. Would you just say hi to her? Mm -hmm. and, and so we became we, friends. My dad and I, we knew that your daughter had gone to Con Call yeah. and we knew Bogey might know you. We, we were asking a couple friends. Yeah. A role great. model we've seen. I've grown up watching you. My dad is 
raise me watching no, your shows. That's great. So. That's great. Well, it's it's something how the automobile industry can affect in different ways. I, I never thought of carburetors, to tell you the truth, but it's true. A lot yeah. of people and even even our shop, you know, we'll send certain carburetors out to have them rebuilt. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do it in our shop. There's some carburetors that are not fun no, at all. No, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot of little in intricacies yeah. and, and gearing inside, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, we, we send most of our, our Weber carburetors out now. We don't mm -hmm. mess around at all in the house. We just put them in a box. Yeah, we turn away at LeBrock's Quadjets. Quadjets, you don't like? No. Okay. Oh, my gosh, no. We get one of those. Where, I'm so sorry we don't do those. <laughs> you're, you're in the Hollies. Mm -hmm. No. No, not how More either. More just Box four barrel, normal okay. uh, Carters. Um, we do some Webers, Autolites. Hollies, we have dabbled in some of it. It's just there's so many um, models and so many kits and so gotcha. many all there. But we do have a shops that we always refer to people to mm -hmm. when they come to us. Or I'm so sorry, but it's actually a dad and son team. It's called the Carb Shop. Okay. And that's the first people we always turn them to. That's great. So how how can people find you? Um, all social media is Riley's Rebuilds. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Um, we have a website called Riley's Rebuild Shopify, and that's where you can buy carburetors that we've already rebuilt, okay. or you can send your carburetor to us. Okay, and we'll rebuild that. So we're gonna have a little a little fun. We have <laughs> Mason Ball mm -hmm. who works for me. He's a recent graduate of McPherson College, yeah. and he does a lot of our carburetor work. We're going to have you up. We're going to have a little carburetor re rebuild face-off. I would love that. A shootout. The carb king and queen against each yeah, other. Yeah, that's right. The young people doing the work and, and who's who's the best at, at it. May come out as a draw. Who knows? <laughs> May come out as a draw, but it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're, we're going to have so you up uh, as soon as you get back to school. Definitely. We'll set that up and we'll have a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm glad that, that you and your dad came today and got to see the auction. Thank you. And I hope you go in. Now, there, there's one thing. Do not raise your hand. Yeah, that's what he was saying. You, But unless you okay. have one of these, you're safe. Okay. You have to have one with a number on it. So okay. they won't take your bid unless you have one of those. That's good. But you have a very special one. You're a VIP, so that's cool. And I'll have you know who whose uh, tag that is. Uh, so that I... was Richard Petty's. Uh -huh. He was here yesterday, and uh, we were uh, able to get those. So you're already uh, you're have the king <laughs> around your neck. Well, nice awesome. talking with you, Riley. It was really great. Good to talking see you too. Yeah, that was that was a great time being with Riley. Uh, you know, Meekum is so busy and there's so much action going on, but we got the opportunity to go in the Ferrari room, which was a, a great, quiet little space and really amazing to hear her story. I mean, you know, she's got a great future. She's doing a lot of uh, television things right now and um, she's going to be fantastic. The other thing it'd be good to rap about at some point is what's going on with the auction world, right? Because Classic car prices are kind of all over the place. Some stuff is going down, some stuff is holding steady, and some yeah. stuff is still hitting record prices. And it looks to me, and you can tell me when, because you know more than anybody, the blue chip stuff, the really, really blue chip stuff, we're talking the gold wings and the 250s, they're solid as ever, if not going up for the, for the best of the best. But some of the more mid-tier cars are slipping, and, and your bottom cars, the last ones to come up, maybe your 50s era American cars or your traditional hot rods, th those are faltering a little bit and coming back down. Would you, would you say that's true? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's what's happening a little bit. I mean, you know, um, we're finding that E-types are really soft at the moment. Um, Aston's DB4, fives and sixes are sort of soft at the moment. Um, resto mods are still doing very well as long as it's a freshly built resto mod. Right. Um, and, and Corvettes, I mean, who would ever think that a resto mod Corvette would would do over a million dollars. It was, it's just, it's crazy, but that's what people want. Um, there's, gold wings are sort of crazy in the marketplace right now. Um, I know that two didn't sell at uh, Scottsdale um, and, and they were very nice cars, but then one spectacular car uh, restored by Rudy Konachek up in, um, in Canada, um, it got, Three over three million dollars um, at Bear Jackson. Wow! So that set a new record for a Gullwing. Yeah, it was an alloy. You know, 
an alloy engine and it had the disc brakes and it had the uh, the knockoff, the rudge wheels, right? the luggage and all this stuff. And Rudy just does an unbelievable job in the T- restoration. Ticked all the boxes, as they say. It did. And then I have one person, that, and of course, it has to be more than one person in the room. There was two or three people that thought $3 million was not too much to spend on a going, apparently. Yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, the cars, the mid-tier cars, like you say, um, now hot rods, uh, you're never going to get your money back when you sell a hot rod. It's just one of those things. And it's, it's an expression of, of yourself, um, and it's not maybe an expression of somebody else. So, But we did very well. Um, we brought a, a sedan delivery and it sold for two seventy. dollars So um, that's like $300,000 home. And that, that was, that was a very good price. Now to build that car today, probably be over a million dollars. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're a, if you're a buyer for a hot rod, sometimes it's be patient, um, buy something, it's all done and then personalize it yourself. Just do a, maybe a little something to it to make it your own. Yeah. Uh, now, I got caught up in that a little bit down at Kissimmee. I'm not supposed to go and buy anything. I'm, a, you know, I'm on a sell mode trip to Kissimmee. What did you and drag I'm home? Having, what did you drag I'm, home? I'm having lunch with my buddy Danny and, and his wife, Lisa. And uh, he said, hey, did you see that mole hot rod? I said, what mole hot rod? There's no mole hot rod here. He says, oh, yeah, it's in the staging lane. Well, we dropped our sandwiches ran out to the staging lane and of course there is this blue mole hot rod now talk about making it your own so that i had seen this car from across the room in the tent i was in but it had fat back tires on it and i'm not a fat back tire guy i just don't i mean it's that doesn't look like your traditional hot rod right it looks that it it looks like that uh, 80s type hot rod right so i never went and looked well there it is the same car I'd been looking at, but then I started looking closely at it and it was a mole car and it had a Gurney Westlake engine in it. I mean, rare as hen teeth, these Gurney right. Westlake. Yeah. And I saw that engine and all of a sudden it clicked. I'd seen this car when Steve was building it. And so I was in his shop. I was building my car at the same time with Steve and I'd seen it and I really liked it. But I never thought there was going to be an opportunity to buy it. Well, I called Steve anyways, long story short. He told me what, how wonderful the car was. And uh, I went up into the rafters in the gold section. And I'm going to hide. And hopefully nobody's going to see me bidding on this car. Right. Try to sneak it in, right? Uh-huh. Well, in the rafters. And the young man is there. And he's the bidder assistant. I, and I said, I'm going to be bidding on two cars coming up. It's a little hot rod. And I said, so... Uh, you got a whistle. You got a horn. He says, "No, I, I have a strong voice." I said, "Well, you better have a pretty strong voice. It's pretty loud in here today." Oh, don't worry about it. So, car comes up on the stage, and I said, "Start with a hundred grand." And all of a sudden, he's he's trying to get the bidder, the the auctioneer's attention, and all of a sudden, it's already up to one hundred twenty. And I'm going, you, "You're not screaming loud enough." And then it gets up to 150 and he's still trying to get the attention. So finally, I pushed them out of the way and I started wearing my arms around like this and they saw me. Well, so much for being under covert. Not only did, did the auctioneer see me, now the TV cameras see me. And now I'm on TV and I'm waving my hands around like this. And, and so I ended up buying the car. And, um, and of course, after that, my phone blew up. Oh, nice car. Oh, Great buy. I said, how did they see me? Well, of course, I didn't realize that John Craman was sitting down there. And 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 he said, hey, look, Wayne's buying this car. Oh, no. The cameras were right up into the third rafters. And oh, no. Picked. So anyways, I have it back. I love it. But um, personalizing myself, getting some new wheels and some uh, skinnier tires. Yeah. And the fat tire deal is going away. And, and Steve Mole is kind of semi-retired now. He's sort of letting his son Michael take over. So- well, yeah, um, you know, the boys are taking over and Steve's still working very hard, but he's letting them run the operation. Yeah. So you got David and Michael Mole and, and they do a fabulous job um, working together, two brothers. And of course, they got a really great crew, very yeah. small crew, but, but great. And, and they've got Jimmy Kilroy, who's, uh, who's their metal guy. And, and all they got to do is show Jimmy a picture of the car and he builds it. There's no CAD drawings. There's nothing. He just sees a picture. Give me the frame. Give me a little bit of an idea where I'm going with this. And and bang, Jimmy builds it. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. 
Crazy skill. Well, you're yeah, lucky sorry, to have folks. a mold car because I think there are, people are going to look back at time and see him as one of the greatest hot rod coach builders of all time, honestly. Well, you know, there's great hot rod builders. Uh, Ray Brizio's a great hot rod sure. builder. His shop is fabulous. There's lots of shops, but but Steve can make a car from scratch. That's why I say and, the term coach builder. I really, when coach, I say hot rod coach builder, right? Like Roy right. Brizio, I've got a great shop up here called East Bay Speed and Custom. They do beautiful cars. But, yeah. but the mold difference to me is that he can fabricate a car from scratch 100%. And there's not many guys that have that skill left in the world. And I think the mold family, what's four generations now, has been doing that. So That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Did you hit Scottsdale as well? I did not. No. You know, I broke the streak this year. I've been um, Scottsdale for about 25 straight years. And um, I really saw no need. I wasn't selling anything. Um, and... It was just one of those, one of those times. And of course I used to go a lot for Haggerty yeah. and Haggerty didn't have too much going on this year. So, um, you know, I enjoyed my stay at home. Now I understand that you were somewhere like on the high seas somewhere with a Mai Tai. What, what was up with that? I've had a couple trips in a row. Yeah. So I went out to uh, Florida and I spoke for the Disney college kids program, which they live at this campus called Flamingo Crossing and did a talk for about 400 Disney college students that work at Walt Disney World while they're in college and they get college credit while they're doing this and they're learning different trades. It was great. And then I took a Disney cruise on board the Fantasy. We went to the Virgin Islands, US and British Virgin Islands, and then stopped. Disney has their own island called Castaway Key that used to be called Gorda Key and uh, stopped there for a day and came back. So a seven day cruise with the family, a couple more days at Walt Disney World and flew home. So I've got my fill of Mickey. I'm all, I'm good for a long time on <laughs> You're Mickey. You're Mickey'd out. I'm Mickey'd out. And then this last weekend, I went to the NASCAR Clash Race that they do at the LA Coliseum. And Where also, I went was to the, with you. you were supposed to be there. Uh, Joey Logano yeah. was asking about you. And then yeah. I went to the Grand National Roadster Show. So I got, to, got them both in in a weekend. Well, uh, and the weather played your hand very well with that because, uh, because the race was supposed to be on Sunday. And the Grand National Roadster Show, of course, is all weekend. You just couldn't do both, I think. So, um, when they moved the race up to Saturday, which is, is, is a great thing because my flight was supposed to get in, uh, at like six o'clock at night on Saturday to come to the race with you on Sunday. And I had, a, I had a little something I had to do and I couldn't move it to back to front. Yeah. So anyways, uh, it, it worked out that I couldn't go and, uh, but I watched on TV. I saw you in the stands. Yeah. I think it was you. It was me. Yeah. Actually, at the very top of the LA Coliseum, and it's a great, it's not a huge Coliseum, but at the very top of it is an open deck that they call the 1923 Club, which is when the LA Coliseum opened, the Memorial Coliseum uh, opened, because they did the 1936 Olympics there, and they did the 84 Olympics there. Um, right. At the very top is this open deck, and you've got a little kind of a countertop, and they serve food up there, and that's where I watch from every year, and I love it, because you've got a great view of everything, and you're not boxed in. You can walk around and sit on a rail and eat a hot dog. And you're going to be with me next year for that one. Yeah, I, I, I would certainly love to do that. I'll tell you. And uh, Joey was looking really good till that final restart. They had that caution, yeah, and that just kicked him on the. You know, at the restart, he fell back to fourth and tried to move up. He did well. Yeah, he the pro well. the problem is it's a very tiny little bowl that they're working in, and as soon as you lose a place to get it back is by hook or by crook. You you, you got somebody in front of you. You inevitably are going to be lapping back markers inevitably and it's it's about luck about who's squeezing in there and a lot of guys were moving up and falling down the order quite a bit getting bumped it's not your fault you you go into a corner somebody hits you and your back slides out you're done and you fall down the order and that happens quite a bit in that race but it's fun yeah yeah well we'll get we'll get to see him i'm going to charlotte this year um so we'll we'll get to see all the nascar friends down there it'll be a lot of fun that's for sure but i'm sure you look like you were having a good time you sent me some pictures and so uh, and, and of course, the Lightning McQueen was there too. So, the new yeah, we had a great time. We brought our. <laughs> we had to get Lightning out of there before the rain came. Uh, strangely enough, Lightning and rain don't mix, so we had to get him out of there before the storm began. Um, wow. But uh, we hope you're. We hope you're doing okay because of the storm. It didn't uh, impact your life too much. I hope. No, no, we're we're okay. We're hanging in there. I haven't finished the arc yet, so but we'll, we'll have the arc done probably by next week. That we're fine. Um, and then, you know, speaking of NASCAR, we're all going to be at the Amelia Island Concourse, and Rick Hendrick is getting honored this year, which is pretty cool. That's right. You know, uh, when I was at Kissimmee, I ran into Mr. Hendrick and I got to 
spend a couple minutes with him. So uh, just a super guy. We took some pictures together. Um, and uh, I, I told him I was coming down for this Smith Heritage event. And so I'll, I'll see him there, but I'll see him at Amelia first. So th that'll be kind of cool. There's going to be doing some panels. Now, you and I have something to do on Friday with our friends from Classic Motorsports magazine. And we're, we're doing a little panel discussion there. I hope that your plane is not going to be late so that you can arrive on time for that. Yeah, I'm doing a red eye. I'm doing a red eye to get in Friday morning just so I can be there with you. That's great. That's great. Well, we'll have a lot of fun with that. And then, of course, Amelia Island, you and I judge there every year. And it's just a great event. We love being there. And I understand they're going to let us do a little uh, radio interview over there, too. Um, so with, uh, with the interviewers that, that are doing that. So we've got Justin Bell um, and Tommy K, TK, uh, Tommy Kendall. So we'll see if we can squeeze those guys off the stage and have something for ourselves there. I think it's Saturday afternoon they're going to ask us to do something. Well, the good news is we got Matt Strauss. And honestly, when he gets up there with the knuckles and just pushes people out of the way, we're, we're not, you know, those guys That's can't right. hold them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're toast. Matt, Matt's going to be with us uh, uh, for that Friday event, too. Uh, oh, good. So, yeah, yeah. Right. Matt's coming down. Matt's going to be there. Lowell will be there. You know, we'll have all the, the whole gang together. I love it. I love it. And I'm showing, I'm showing a Griffith this year um, oh. down at Amelia. So that'll be kind of fun at Griffith 200 that was on an episode of Chasing Classic Cars that I, fall, I found in Falls Church, Virginia in a parking garage at a condo complex, a high-rise condo complex. In the, and it was sitting in there for over 20 years. When, when you say a Griffith, are you saying a TVR Griffith? Yes, sir. Oh. It was built by Jack Griffith out on Long Island. And um, just a cool little car. I've had several of them over the years. And I finally, I, I found one. I said, I'm going to restore this for myself. And then a client of mine came along to see his uh, Edwards America that we were restoring. For I him. remember that car. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, to, he had to have the Griffith. So it's his Griffith. And uh, we're finishing the restoration. Uh, of course, you know, the truck's going to pull in the driveway in about a week to pick it up and we'll still be working on it. That's, that's what we do best. Work under pressure. Yeah. Well, I know we're about out of time for today, and I love the interview with Riley. Um, I wanted to talk about just a couple books I've been reading lately that I think folks might be interested in. So this is a, we don't do this too often, but I've got a book report for the week. That's great. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So number one is this book called The Car by Brian Appleyard. And this guy is a Brit who writes the complete history of the automobile from the very, very beginning until what he is saying is basically we're at the very end of the internal combustion engine ruling the automotive world as EVs and autonomous cars are coming in. We're closing out slowly this chapter of history of the automobile that we'll never see again. And what the car was able to do in this 150 year span is amazing that it literally changed the world that you know and I know. But uh, he breaks it down in such a great way. And he goes through uh, Bertha Benz driving the first uh, Benz, as you know, uh, in Germany. Uh, the birth of Henry Ford and the growth of how Henry Ford built that empire and how Detroit became the capital of automobiles rather than New York or another city. It's all in here. And it's a great, great wow. read. So check this one out. And then just yesterday in my mailbox, I got a book by this guy, Ray Evernham, who you probably, right. yeah, his new book Our is book called, ready. yeah, Trophies and Scars. I have not even got into the book yet. I literally just got the copy. He sent me one and said, hey, I want you to read this and tell me what you think. So I can't wait to jump into this. I've already took a peek and it's written in such a really honest, beautiful way like Ray is. He's just not a guy of pretense. And you get a sense it's a genuine story by a genuine man. Lots of great photos and stories in here. So I can't wait to dive deeper into that. Well, um, after, after we do this, I'm going to be on the phone with Ray asking where my copy is. So <laughs> Don't tell him I told you. I'm just going to say, I heard you have this wonderful book out. I was wondering if you sign one for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll have them at Amelia, hopefully. So oh, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd, that'd be great. And uh, if, if I could get somebody off their butts, we'll have my book uh, coming out here, hopefully by the end of the year. So we'll see how that goes. Well, I hope uh, you get a copy of that and read it as well. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to be heading to the Boca Concours. It's a, a little bit different this year. So I'll be doing that the week before. Amelia. So I'm down there on the Saturday before. And then we go down on Wednesday for Amelia. Then I'm off to Glendale, uh, Arizona, where Meekum is having an auction. I'm selling a Talladega Torino, the ex-George Poteet car that I own. And so that'll be going across the block 
Um, and so, yeah, I'm busy flying around, doing all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm going to also be um, at the, um, let's see, it's up in Northampton, Mass. It's the Antique Motorcycle Club of America, their 70th anniversary. And I'm the Grand Marshal there. So, uh, and, and, and then, of course, uh, I give a, a plug to our good friends over at Magneto Magazine, uh, who actually just bought Octane Magazine, too. David Lilly Light. Lily White, I should say. Yeah. And they just did an article about me and it's, uh, that magazine will be out, uh, at Amelia. So yeah, David Lily White and Jeff Love have been, you know, working together for years. And when they were at Octane, it was a great magazine. I thought, ah, they, where's it going to go? And they did a few other things. They had some online things and then they launched Magneto and it is such a well done magazine. So beautiful. And it, it gives you hope that print is still worth having and collecting and Magneto's and I've got my row right here. These are almost like little books and they're just beautiful. I thought that they'd blend the two magazines together. And I was on the phone with him the other day and he said, no, Jeff and I are moving forward, maintain Octane magazine also. So. Oh, that's great. Good for yeah. him. He's a great, he's a great guy. They're both great guys and I'm, I'm very happy for them. And hopefully we'll see them at Amelia Island as well. Well, it's great to talk with you again, Jay, catch up and you too, Matt. Nice to have you both here. And uh, we look forward to being with you at Amelia. All right. See you guys both down the road. See you, bud.